In this video, we will talk about what is machine learning and why should we care about machine learning. You may not know it, but machine learning is all around you. For example, when you open your email inbox, you do not see most of the spam messages because machine learning filters them out for you. Or when you type a search query in your search engine, your search engine uses machine learning to decide what results to show you and also what ads to show you. Here I'm showing you some other example applications of machine learning. Voice assistants, Google News, recommender systems, face recognition, auto completion in your text messaging app and email, stock market prediction, character recognition, self-driving car, cancer diagnosis, drug discovery, are all examples of machine learning. The best AlphaGo player in the world right now is not a human anymore. It's a machine learning system. For what kind of problems machine learning is appropriate? And what are the advantages of machine learning? Imagine that your boss asks you to write a spam identification program for your company. Now you don't know anything about machine learning, but you know Python. So here is what you decide to do. You look at some example spam and non-spam messages. You use your human understanding of spam messages and you decide to come up with a bunch of rules. Your idea is to put these rules in Python to create your spam identification system. Now you can imagine how time consuming and hard this would be. It would be really hard to come up with a robust set of such rules. Machine learning is very much appropriate for such kind of problems. And the idea behind machine learning is collecting large amount of data relevant to your problem and using machine learning algorithms to learn such kind of rules automatically. So in our case, we would collect large number of spam and non-spam emails or text messages and let the machine learning algorithm figure out these rules for spam identification. So the main idea of machine learning is given large amount of data, you use machine learning algorithms to glean information from this data or to find patterns in this data. Why machine learning has become such an important field these days? There are multiple reasons. But one of the main reasons is that there is large amount of data available out there in many different domains, which makes machine learning applicable in all these domains. And with machine learning, you're likely to save time and it's easier to customize and scale products. Let's talk a little bit about supervised machine learning. There are different types of machine learning depending upon what kind of problem you are trying to solve and what kind of data is available to you. Some typical learning problems include supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and recommender systems. For now, let's just focus on supervised learning. What is supervised machine learning? In supervised machine learning, we are given a set of observations X and their corresponding targets Y. In our spam classification example, for instance, our X would be a set of text messages or emails and Y would be their corresponding targets, whether that text message or email is spam or not spam. In this toy example, X is this set of emoticons and why are the corresponding targets, corresponding labels for these emoticons. So this is a cat, this is a cat emoticon, this is a dog emoticon, and this is a dog emoticon. And given this set of observations and their corresponding targets, so given X and Y, what we want to find is we want to find this mapping function F that relates X to Y. So given this training data, we call this training data, we use some machine learning algorithm to learn this mapping function between X and Y. Once we have this mapping function, we can use this mapping function to predict 
targets or labels on new unseen examples. So in this particular case, these are our new emoticons, which are not really present in the training data. And using this model function, we want to identify targets for these new examples. And so the predictions would look something like this, that this is a cat and this is a dog. So that's what we are interested in doing in supervised machine learning. We are given X and Y. We want to learn this model function F, and then we want to apply this model function to predict targets of new examples. Let's look at a concrete example of identifying spam. For now, do not worry about the code or syntax. Here I'm showing you first few rows of a data set containing spam and non-spam text messages. So this column SMS are our text messages and target has the corresponding targets. This first text message, for instance, look at me, thanks for your purchase of a video clip from look at me, blah, blah, blah. This does look like a spam message and it is labeled as spam. The second message, for instance, doesn't really look like a spam message and it is labeled as ham. So in this data set, they call non-spam ham. Okay, so this is our X. This SMS column is our X and target column is our Y. Now that we have our X and Y, we feed this, we feed X and Y to a machine learning algorithm. And this machine learning algorithm learns a mapping function between X and Y. Once we have the mapping function, we use that mapping function to predict targets of unseen examples. So given new text messages now, we want to predict the target for these text messages. How do we do that? We use our learn model function for these predictions. So these are the new text messages and these are the predictions given by our model function. So our model identified this third text message as a spam message. And if you read the message, we know someone who you know that fancies you call this number, blah, blah, blah. This does look like a spam message. So our model correctly identified this as a spam message. Okay, now that you have some idea about supervised machine learning, I'll show you a popular definition of it. Here is a popular definition by Arthur Samuel. He says that supervised machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. What does that mean? In traditional programming, so for example, when we, when we were thinking about writing a Python program for spam identification, there is some input and program. So in spam identification, our input would be some text message and our program would be a bunch of rules. And output would be whether that text message is spam or non-spam. In machine learning paradigm, we are given this data. We are given X and Y. So in our spam classification example, we are given spam and non-spam messages and their corresponding targets. We feed this data to a machine learning algorithm and the machine learning algorithm learns a program. That is, it learns this mapping function, which we can use to predict targets for new examples. So machine learning is a different way to think about problem solving. Let's look at some more concrete examples of supervised machine learning. Again, do not worry about the code or syntax at this point and only focus on the input and output in each case. Our first example is about predicting whether a patient has a liver disease or not. So here is our data set and here are first few rows from our data set. Each row here corresponds to a patient. 
the columns are some attributes of patients and we have this special column called target column which tells us whether that patient has the liver disease or not. Now similar to how we did before with spam identification, now that we have our X and Y, we feed X and Y to a machine learning algorithm. And this machine learning algorithm learns a mapping function between X and Y. And now that we have the mapping function, we can use the mapping function to predict targets for new patients. So suppose these four new patients show up at the clinic and we want to predict whether these patients have the liver disease or not. So we apply our model function on these examples and we get predictions. And these are the predictions given by our model. The first patient doesn't have the disease, but uh, these three patients, they have the disease according to the model. Our second example is predicting the label of a given image. So in the first example, we had this data, this tabular data, and now our data is image data. We have a bunch of images and we want to predict labels of these images. How do we do it? Now I have downloaded a model built by someone else on millions of images. And I'm going to use that model to predict labels for some new images. So this is a new image. This is a picture taken by me. And these are the predictions given by the model. So the model thinks that it's a tiger cat and it also has some kind of a score, some confidence score for this prediction. Then this picture, if I remember correctly, I took it from CBC. And the model again correctly identified that this is a cheetah and it is pretty confident about it and so on. Our third example is about predicting sentiment of a given movie review. In the first example, we had tabular data. In the second example, we had image data. Now in this example, we have text data. This is similar to our spam identification problem. Now this, for this, I'm going to use this IMDB movie review data set. And in this data set, we have movie reviews and their corresponding targets. So this review, for example, is positive, And this second review is negative and so on. So now that we have this X and Y, so X is movie reviews and Y is whether that movie review is positive or negative, we feed that data, we feed X and Y to a machine learning algorithm. And the algorithm will learn this mapping function between X and Y. Once we have the mapping function, we can use the mapping function to predict sentiment of new movie reviews. For example, this is our new movie review you will feel like you are experienced a vacation in hell after you have sat down and watched this horrible TV movie. So it is kind of obvious that it's negative and our model has predicted this movie review as negative. Our next example is predicting housing prices. So this is our data. Each row here corresponds to a property. And these columns are attributes of different properties. So for example, how many bedrooms are there? How many bathrooms are there? How many floors are there? What's the view of the property and so on. And we have this special column called target column, which tells us the price associated with that property. Now, in this particular case, target is a little bit different compared to what we have seen before. In previous cases, for example, in spam identification or sentiment analysis, we just had two possible targets. Our targets were these discrete values, whether the email is spam or not, or whether the sentiment is positive or negative. But in this particular case, our target is this continuous value. 
and we want to predict these continuous values associated with properties. Can we do that using supervised machine learning? Yes, we can. Here we are building model function between x and this continuous target. And we can use this learn function, our model, to predict prices of new properties. So here we have some new properties and these are predictions for these new properties. So supervised machine learning is quite flexible and you can use it on different types of data. We can use it on text data, image data, tabular data. We can use it when the target is categorical or when it's continuous.